Good morning, Coach. How are you? Doing great, Gary. How are you? Very, very well. Uh, just uh, looking out the window here, this gorgeous weather. It's it's beautiful. We kind of turn back the clock. It feels more like early May than, than June. But uh, for you guys, I know everybody would say, well, it's June. There's a little bit of a of a respite there, but uh, there's never a break. And I know it's camp time at the University of Alabama. You guys got your basketball camps coming up. No, we do have uh, a lot going on. And certainly, you know, camp is a big part of our June. And it's an exciting time for, you know, Coach Avery and it's important to him. Uh, it's a great way for our basketball program to be exposed to the community. And, um, you know, there's a, the University of Alabama is really important uh, to, to the people in this state. And uh, it's an opportunity for them to come and be around Coach and our players and and uh, to be here and kind of learn about our team. And, um, you know, and we, we want to be a part of their summer and, and uh, we want them to be a part of our winter and, and, and our basketball season. So, um, yeah, camps are always exciting. We've got individual camps, and and we've got, um, you know, a team camp. And so if anybody wants to do that, certainly go to the website with CoachAvery.com and, or Coach Avery Camps. And, and, um, but they're filling up fast. But uh, that's a piece of it. Our players are obviously here, and they're working, and, you know, for school, first of all. And, some of these guys are in school for the first time and kind of getting their feet wet, learning what campus looks like, what a college class is all about, and the other guys are working towards graduation. Um, and then obviously the other piece of that, too, is physically they're trying to improve themselves and prepare for the upcoming season. I, probably most people don't know how much work these student-athletes you know, put in academically in the summer and then also put in physically so they'll be ready to go when their season gets here. You don't just start physically preparing for a season, uh, you know, when the season starts. There's so much work that goes into it prior to that. Coach John Pelfrey, our guest on the Bud Light Hotline here on the Gary Harris Show. You know, you got a really good team on paper coming back, and I know you've, you, you've got to build it. But I, I do want to ask you, you're a big part of it, this incredible signing class of Colin Sexton, John Petty, Alex Reese, Herb Jones, and Galen Smith. I mean, these five guys could be, you know, your Alabama version of, of a five of a Fab Five. I mean, not only do you have five great players, you got guys that have different talents and can do different things. Now that they're on campus and uh, – the excitement continues to grow, but as a coaching staff to recruit these guys, sign them and now get them here. Uh, I, that's got to be very fulfilling and, and, and a very exciting aspect of, of what you do to, to recruit a class, sign a class and now get them on campus and get them, get them to work. Well, you're right, Gary. And it's such a long process. You know, you identify these guys, then you start to kind of figure out, you know, what's their DNA. Anybody can recognize their talent, but what's their DNA, you know, how do they feel about work? How do they you know, do they understand the game? Are they resilient? Can they bounce back from a big win or a big loss? And are they ready to go for the next one? When they, when, if they had an 8 a.m. game, what's that look like? Are they unselfish? Do they care about their teammates? Can can they receive coaching? Uh, you know, what are they like back home in their community? Do, are, are they a serious student as well? Because academic standards on college campuses aren't getting you know, any lower. They're only going to continue to climb and. So it's such a long process. And you're right to get them here is, is so exciting. And now we got to find out, you know, how committed are we to winning as a group? That's right. You know, can we continue to sacrifice the fights and grow and come together? Can we create this this chemistry uh, or, or is it just going to organically happen, you know? And I think that's one of the things the college coach, especially Coach David Smith from the NBA, we're trying to put these guys into a situation where we're kind of speeding up you know, the, the, the team chemistry, the togetherness. Because all great teams, you hear them talking about it, anybody that's competing for a championship, talk about how much love there is in the locker room. They care about each other. They're willing to sacrifice. They're going to stand by each other through thick and thin. And that's all stuff that we're kind of starting this summer, uh, you know, to see kind of where can we go. Because, you know, quite honestly, you're right. The team looks, the roster looks outstanding on paper. We're excited about the talent level. We're excited about the people. Um but at the end of the day, you know, that's not where games are played. They're not played on paper. They're going to, you know, what do we do to prepare and then how can we perform? And that thing about preparing and sticking with the process, staying with it, putting bricks in the wall every single day, uh, just so we get our chance to compete, to be great competitors uh, and, and pull for each other, those are the moments that we're working for, and it starts right now. 
No doubt about it. You know, looking at this signing class, I guess the thing that excites me, Coach, and and don't get me wrong, I know you guys will go to Texas if there's a great player that is interested in Alabama. You'll you'll go to California, the Midwest, or wherever. But looking at this class, it, it, I guess it shows that you can stay here local and regionally and put together a top five recruiting class. You've got three from the state of Alabama, one from the border state in Mississippi, and one from the border state in Georgia. And this is a top five recruited class. So, yes, you may want to spread your horizons recruiting, but you can stay right here in the southeast and find great basketball players. That's obvious by what you guys have done this year. Gary, yeah, you're 100% right. I mean, there's Alabama's always had a rich tradition of talent, certainly, you know, in our wheelhouse, in our footprint, uh, you know, with surrounding states and you know, that A means something. Alabama's got tremendous, tremendous brand power. Uh, and regardless of, you know, who the coach is, it's a big deal when the Alabama coach shows up in somebody's school or somebody's game. And um, that's just been the way it's been for a long, long time. And you can just walk down our hallways and see the great players. And uh, a lot of these guys are from the state of Alabama, certainly close by. Um, as we talked about, you know, with, with a state that probably touches our border. Uh, certainly, if you venture out of your footprint, you know, you hope there's a relationship there with somebody, you know, is is in your corner. But, you know, that's just uh, understanding recruiting 101 is, is where you're going to have your most success because none of us want to, you know, waste time and because uh, you've got to get somebody and you got to have a team. But, yeah, it's exciting just with this group of guys, they – they feel so strongly about, you know, about Alabama. Um, a lot of these guys, like you said, are from the state, and it just means a little bit more to them. It's not just another jersey; it's a special piece of cloth. Certainly, from my college experience, I understand that. Um, but these guys, you know, they like being here. They like each other. Um, this team has has an opportunity, and again, it's going to come down to, you know. How hard can they work to understand their roles and responsibilities? How much are they willing to sacrifice? And then obviously it's still a game when the moment comes up in games. You know, can't, can't, are we, we going to be ready? Colin Sexton is so interesting because uh, in addition to being a charismatic, terrific player, uh, and when the ball's in his hands, everybody is just, you know, you're gasping, waiting to see what he's going to do next. But uh, And I know Antoine Pettway did a great job of identifying him, but Alabama was on him before he blew up, before everybody knew the name Colin Sexton. But then all of a sudden, Coach, uh, he does blow up, and, and he's a national recruit, and yet Alabama uh, was able to – to get him to sign. Talk about that process. I know I think on the first uh, day of the contact period, you guys were right there at 12.01 a.m. Uh, ready to see him. You've been through the recruiting war so many times, but when you've got a guy like that that you feel good about, yet all of a sudden, everybody, all the national basketball schools, Kansas and Kentucky and the likes of those folks are, are recruiting this guy. Just talk about that process. And, of course, a lot of it, I guess, speaks to his character that he stuck with Alabama, but how hard and how diligently you guys stayed up on uh, on the recruitment of Colin Sexton. Well, you know, it's all these guys, there was a tremendous relationship being built, and that's where, you know, where any you know, partnership or, a way that happens in life, whether it's recruiting, whether it's business, corporations, whatever, you know, it starts someplace with a relationship. And uh, across the board, I think we feel really strongly about these kids and their families. And, um, you know, obviously Coach Avery and Antoine Petway are right in the middle of all that. Those guys uh, have worked extremely hard with that. And, you know, and, 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 you know, for Antoine Petway, in particular, you brought his name up. Um, there's no question about that. He is, uh, you know, he's a rising superstar in our profession. I've had the privilege of being around, um, you know, having a lot of really good assistant coaches. When I was a head coach, I've also worked with some outstanding. Um, Antoine Petway is right there with any of those guys, and and um, plus on top of that, if you cut this guy, you know, he bleeds crimson, and this is his school. He he's got blood, sweat, and tears invested. Uh, nobody cares about this place more. You might care as much, but you do not care more about that A than he does. And, uh, yeah, he had a really close relationship with, with Khan, as well as a lot of our guys that we recruited in this class. And, and um, it just goes to show you, in a lot of situations, and this one was unique from others, uh, but when you have a, a deep relationship based on the right things, you can withstand a lot of storms, but obviously the storm in that would be, you know, these other quote-unquote, you know, basketball tradition-rich type programs. 
um, that came calling. But, you know, Colin was a little bit different as well. He was looking for a relationship. He's not totally caught up in social media or some of those things that is so prevalent today's recruiting. Um, but he was looking for fundamental truths as well. Where can I go and have an impact? Where can I go and play? Where can I grow, go and grow and develop, you know, and, and play for a guy like Avery Johnson who's <clears throat> not only done what I want to try to do in college but has had a chance to go to the next level and perform there as well. So, um yeah, and obviously too, you know, you got to buy what uh, what we're selling. So, so Pat did a good job with that. Coach Avery did a good job with that. Alabama did a good job with that. But it's also something that you know Colin and his family were, you know, very intentional of what they're looking for too. We have specific things that uh, out of this process that we're looking for, and and it was it's been a, it was a good partnership, and we're just excited he's here, and I know his teammates like him. He really likes his teammates. And you can tell he's got a sense of pride about, about Tuscaloosa and Alabama already as well. You mentioned partnership. Let's let's talk about your partnership with Avery Johnson because I th- I think it's a you know was a, I thought it was a home run hire when he brought you here with your resume in this not just in this state but of course obviously in this conference. But uh, for him, as charismatic as he is and as good a job as he's done, he had not had any college experience as a coach. You know, had to go back to Southern University as a player. He'd been an NBA guy. For you to come in and uh, team up with him with your knowledge of this league and of this state, it just seems like a kind of a match made in heaven. How has it worked out, and, and what is your, your relationship like with Coach Johnson on a day-to-day basis? How much does he lean on you? Well, it's been, it's been a real blessing for me and my family. And, uh, you know, Coach has uh, you know embraced my family more than I can even imagine, you know, for somebody who did not know us. Uh, he and his wife, Cassandra, have been tremendous. Um, <laughs> my daughter's on, a, on her way to a basketball camp here today, and and uh, Coach Avery called her to wish her well and wanted to hear all about it when she gets back. I mean, um, that's that's the the relationship. That's how close this thing is with that coaching staff. And I think that's unique. It's something, something I had a chance to experience at Florida. So to be able to continue something like that, to be in this type of environment, to be able to work, to partner up with, has been, you know, like I said, a real blessing. Um, I think this place... It kind of, you know, I, I, as a family, we've lived in the state of Alabama for five years prior to coming to Tuscaloosa, down in Mobile, when we were, you know, uh, with South Alabama. Uh, so there's a familiarity for us. You know, this state, it, it's it's a part of who we are as a family as well. And, you know, I think it's just an exciting time to be at Alabama. You know, I it's kind of surprised when I came back. You know, I have a relationship with Coach Newton, who I was going to go play for at one point in time at Vanderbilt, and I live less than a mile from his house now. I get a chance to stop in and say hello, and uh, to him, who's been who's known me since I was 17 years old, Coach Sanderson. I came on an official visit here, uh, you know, and so on and so forth with with Mark, who his father hired me at South Alabama. Certainly, my relationship with Anthony, and so there's just so many things here that feel really good about University of Alabama for me and my family. Um, there's a connection, and to have been in this league as a player, as a coach, to kind of know, you know, what can work uh, and where we can go, and the fact that Alabama's had used success in the past, and and now with, you know, all the changes that's gone on in our league over the last two or three years with, you know, the coaching and this, that, and the other, I really think we have a chance to kind of move ourselves back up to the top and kind of park ourselves there, and not just be there for a year, but kind of you know, do what we did at Florida and kind of stay there for a period of time. And I know that's, you know, what's happened in the past. I know everybody's excited about the potential of that to be here in the future. And certainly that's what Avery Johnson wants to do. Coach John Pelfrey, our guest on the Bud Light Hotline. You can follow him on Twitter at John Pelfrey. That's at J-O-H-N-P-E-L-P-H-R-E-Y. You just did a great job of verbalizing your connection to this state and this program and and the legend C.M. Newton. Of course, as you mentioned, you were recruited by Wimp Sanderson at Alabama before before going to Kentucky, almost went to Vandy. Uh, And and I want to talk about uh, when you were a player at Kentucky under uh, Alabama, under Wimp Sanderson, was on a great run. In fact, they had won the SEC tournament in 89 90 91. It was your Kentucky team in 92 that beat them in the finals there in Birmingham that knocked out the Ori Sprewell Robinson team. Uh, so you know what Alabama basketball has been in the past and, and can be again because you were playing at Kentucky when Alabama was one of the marquee names, not just in the SEC, but in college basketball nationally. Well, there's no question about it. I mean, you think of it, you know, people may forget or maybe they don't, but certainly in this state they're going to remember. Coach Newton had a great 12 year run. 
Coach Sanderson followed it up with another amazing 12 years that you know, kind of took it to another level. Um, Alabama was, you know, the league was ridiculous. I mean, you talk about, you know, Shaquille O'Neal being at LSU and Allen Houston being at, at Tennessee and with Terrell Green, who was their all-time league scorer, you know, at Georgia and just so on and so forth. And Alabama's got Robert Orton, and Terrell Sliwa, James Robinson, Melvin Cheatham, Jason Cass. I mean, it was just like on and on and on. And, you know, so major challenge. And, yeah, you're right. My senior year, we had to play Alabama in Birmingham, uh, you know, after they played that amazing game against Arkansas. Arkansas and Oliver Miller and Todd Day and Lee Mayberry. I mean, like, it was it was really a star-studded league. And, you know, Alabama was right there going toe-to-toe, having as much or more success than anybody uh, at that moment in time. And, you know, Coach Sanderson's a, just a phenomenal coach and, Obviously, uh, I'm lucky to still have a personal relationship with him. And, uh, you know, Coach Polinski was on that staff. Coach Hobbs was there. Uh, so, you know, for me having a chance to come here and visit, you know, obviously I'm from Kentucky and that will always be home. But, like, this is really uh, – I got deep root relationships in this state. And, uh, you know, that's – you know, our brand, uh, uh, Tuscaloosa, um, the way people feel about this school and what goes on up, up here every day. I, I identify with that uh, in, in a big, big way. So uh, this is a special place, and, and um, obviously that's not just me saying that. And there's a lot of people that that feel the same way, and you can see our kind of our recruiting is kind of trended in that direction as well. Yeah, you mentioned Coach Newton's 12-year run at Alabama. They won three straight SEC regular season championships in 74, 75, and 76. And, and John, I tell people all the time, and I had a chance to sit down with Coach Newton last summer and do a 30-minute in-depth interview with him. Uh, That 76 Alabama team, and there have been some great ones, but I still think that was the best one ever. Uh, You know, that's before they seeded the teams in the tournament. They got stuck in the bracket with Indiana. They blew out North Carolina and Phil Ford in in the first round game and then lost that heartbreaker 74-69 to Indiana. And Indiana, of course, rolled through the tournament. And Bob Knight said for the record, it said Alabama was the toughest game they had, but with Leon Douglas, Reggie King, Ricky Brown, T.R. Dunn, and, and Anthony Murray, that was an amazing team, and I think it's I think it's the standard. The 87 team that Coach Sanderson had was a great team, but uh, I, I say all that to get to this. Um, you were at Florida. You, you've been at Arkansas, programs that have, have been to the Final Four and won national championships. Of course, you played at Kentucky, which is, you know, we know about Kentucky, but Alabama, to have a program that has this much history and this much tradition, but has never been to a Final Four, to have a chance to do something that's never been done. You can't go to many places and, and, and do that, but here that's still out there. Uh, is it is it real? Is it is it something that can happen here, Coach, do you think? Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. Absolutely, and that's what we're working towards every single day. You know, if somebody tries to tell you something's impossible, it is impossible until it gets done. <laughs> I just saw that the other day. I was out running on campus, and by the way, our campus is as nice as anybody's ever seen. But so yeah, I saw that someplace. I'm not even sure who said it, but absolutely it is. I mean, nobody thought after we beat South Carolina in the SEC tournament that they would, you know, be in the Final Four and, right. and really be in position to advance to the national championship game. Certainly, we did that in a short period of time at Florida. Uh, and then Billy ends up going to, you know, the Final Four three more times, winning it twice. So, yeah, it doesn't, you know, it, not, to, not to diminish the fact of how hard it is. But yes, that goal is attainable. It's, it's, uh, we have the leadership with Greg Byrne. We have um, the state, the, the brand power, the, the fan base, the excitement, the commitment. Uh, we have the coach and Avery Johnson, uh, and now we've you know we're starting to get um, you know this talent, this certain talent level, this DNA, and you know I do feel like though. You know, Gary, that our tournament is just a strange animal. Like, you know, like like the thing you just talked about there with, you know, with Coach Newton's really good team. You can just get a bad draw. That's right. And it's a one and done. It's not a series, you know. And we play our biggest games of the year in places sometimes that don't look like basketball arenas with referees who've never seen us play. Um, Those come really challenging dynamics. You know, you've only got five fouls. The game sometimes gets called you know, really, really differently. And so there's so much that goes into, like, this tournament that makes it madness. It literally makes it madness. You know, I think our season is a much, much more, a much better barometer of how good a team you are. But you need a lot of luck. You need to be playing well. You need to get the right matchups. 
like coaches say this all the time, if you started the NCAA tournament over and you played it again, it, the bracket wouldn't go the same. It just wouldn't. So there's just this element of who knows, which I think, you know, at least the fact that anything can happen, just like a South Carolina. You don't have to have all the talent. You don't have to have, you know, this wonderful bench uh, to rely on to be able to make it. No, you just need to survive, stay with it, persevere, you know, have one or two guys be, you know, kind of lead the way, uh, the way their young guy did this year with Sedaris Thornwell. And um, it absolutely is possible. And, um, I've had a chance to be a part of it on a couple of different occasions. It's a wonderful experience for everybody, but nobody bores so than the fans and the student athletes. Yeah, you make some great points, and people forget with all the success Florida's had. Uh, but even under Norm Sloan, until Lon Kruger got there to take them to their first Final Four and then Billy Donovan for the national championships, they had never been to one. South Carolina had never been to one, so it, it can happen. Hey, this trip you got coming up in August, uh, when you got all these new players coming in, you you got a transfer that's going to be eligible, and, you, and you're trying to blend all these players together. How big is this going to be to have a chance to go up there and play three games in August? It's going to be a big deal, you know. We're working towards that now. We got to be smart to the other way. We don't want to do so much that we burn these guys out by December, you know. So we got to be sure. smart that way. Um, and we've got a tremendous. Well, first of all, Coach Avery's got a great uh, grasp on that. He understands long seasons because that's what he he's been a part of for such a long period of time. But Clark Holter, our trainer, Lou Deneen, our strength coach, these guys are, you know. Top shelf, they're top notch. They're as good as it gets. Um, it's a, it's, it's interesting to sit back and be a part of discussions about what the best approach is with new guys coming through the door, just to get them prepared for our ten days of practice. You know, at the end of July, preparing for this trip and those performances, we're going to have a chance. You know, we call them evaluations when we play games to see kind of where we are, um, and which is going to give us a tremendous amount of you know, information going into the fall, how we want to structure things and where we need to get better um, before our season starts. So, yeah, we're going to have a chance to get prepared, to introduce, to get our bodies right, to start putting in a system, go play some games, and we can evaluate to see where we are and where we can make improvements. But it's going to be a lot of fun to see how much growth our team makes uh, from the time this, you know, these workouts have already started before we even play our first game, you know, uh, sometime there and, in November, but you know, I think Gary, like the freshman class, is going to have a chance to have a huge impact on our season. But my experiences are that your team is only going to be as good as returning players. So days on England, what have you done this summer? You know, what what type of growth and and step forward are you going to make? Same thing with Braxton Key and Dante Hall and Daniel Giddens and Riley Norris and Avery Johnson Jr. Armand. You know, all these guys that have been through it for a year or so, been in this system with Avery Johnson for a year or so, those are going to be the guys that we're going to really need to count on night in, night out. Our freshman class are going to come in. They're going to have a chance to have an impact. But it's going to be the first time through for them. So there's a learning curve for everybody. For me, when I came to college, I had to register. I wasn't physically ready to go. You know, for Bradley Bill, I told him one time, and he, he, he was like a sponge. And he was able to <laughs> absorb it really quickly and go do it. So I think for our freshman class, it's going to probably be just like anybody else, somewhere in between. But uh, we're excited about them. They are going to have a chance to have an impact. But our veteran players are going to be what really carries us if we're going to have a special season this year. All right, Coach. Finally, we're up against the break, and I know you got to get going too, but it's my first opportunity to talk with you. i, I got to ask you, because I know even as a high school athlete, there's things that I still remember. Uh, to be a part of a game like you were a part of in 92 against Duke and to be the victim of the Leitner shot, uh, I know you move on, time heals all wounds, so forth and so on, but do you really ever get over something like that? I know it was great to be a part of it, but is that something that will stay with you the rest of your life, that game and that, and that moment? Yeah, it really is. You know, when you put all your eggs in one basket, and you know, there's these moments in time which you never forget. That is a define who I am. Absolutely not. Do I understand that? You know that uh, uh, I'm a human being. I got a lot more value than a game, but it doesn't mean I can't get back in the moment uh, very, very easily and and think about one or two plays here or there, or if that guy just missed one free throw. Or absolutely, is there. But you know, you do come to realize that. Uh, my life wouldn't be any better today had we gone to a Final Four. Um, just very, very fortunate and blessed to have played where I played one, 
Uh, I have, I've still got such a love affair with my with my alma mater. The relationship that I have with my teammates is one that's turned into a lifetime. Uh, my experiences with my coaches has forever impacted me, and nobody more than Rick Pitino, uh, Billy Donovan, Herb Sindek, Tubby Smith. I mean, I was so blessed to be around those guys. Uh, those things are way, way out in front of you know that one night, even though it's something that uh, it, it will always be a part of, but uh, it, you know, it ended up not defining who we were. But, you know, it's like anything else. When you put so much into something and you go all in, well, we all love the rewards when we make that shot or we win the championship, we get to cut down the net. But you also got to be willing to stand there and have the courage to come back and be competitive uh, when somebody else does it to you. And that's a part of sports, but you're able to learn and grow from all those situations. I think for all of us, that's had a chance to be a part of it as a player, as a coach. You know, that's the thing you want to do is just learn, grow, and get better. Well said. What a game. What a moment. As a sports fan, we'll remember it for the rest of our lives as well. Coach, I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for the time and uh, the opportunity. To- 